Hi everybody, I'm Lisa Weiss. I am a dermatology GPA in the Atlanta area and we are here at the Elevate Conference and I have the privilege of interviewing Dr. Jenny Clark today. Thank you so much for doing this. And we are gonna talk a little bit about lupus. So can you tell me what the key cutaneous findings are that we should be looking for when we're worried about a patient having lupus? Absolutely, so I think the most important thing is there are a lot of types of lupus that can, a lot of ways it can affect the skin, um, but really all of them are characterized by photosensitivity. Um, so patients who report that a rash that worsens in, in the sun, that they are their skin bothers them in the sun, or you're looking at them and all of the rash is really in a photo distributed area and spares a lot of skin that's, that's not covered. Um, the classic butterfly rash is actually the least common lupus <laughs> rash that we see in dermatology, um, but that just kind of looks like a sunburn on the central part of the face generally and, and spares the nasolabial folds. The most common skin manifestation of lupus is discoid lupus, and that looks like scaly plaques that are uh, atrophic, often especially in the center. It causes scarring alopecia. And one of the weird places it likes to show up, which isn't uh, photo distributed area is in the conchal bowl. So I always tell wow. people, look in the ears if you're wondering about discoid lupus. That's such a good pearl, thank you. I think we're all programmed to think that it's just the malar rash and like it's so nice to know that there are other places that we can look. Mm -hmm. um, what labs do you do when you're worried about a patient having lupus and how often do you check them? That is a great question and uh, it's, it's a little bit, complicated because we divide it, I think, basically into when we're first making their diagnosis and then how we're following them over time longitudinally. Um, initially, um, the big question is, do they also have systemic disease? And that's the reason for doing labs, even over time. Um, but we do a broader panel at diagnosis and then can really refine that in the future. So um, initially, it's important, of course, to look for that ANA test. Um, Pretty much every patient, whether they have skin limited or systemic disease, will have an ANA. Um, so we always do that. Um, we check blood count to make sure they don't have cytopenias. We check liver, uh, or sorry, kidney testing um, and urinalysis because urinalysis will detect kidney disease even sooner than blood work will. Um, and then we'll do some additional ser serologic testing, looking for other autoantibodies. I usually check for anti-Smith, double-stranded DNA. Uh, I'll do a uh, lupus anticoagulant and anticardiolipin panel to see if they're hypercoagulable as part of their disease. And I'll also check complement levels. Over time, I don't repeat all those antibodies. Okay. <laughs> I just really am looking to see if they're starting to develop kidney disease or cytopenias. Um, so the urinalysis, CBC, um, and uh, kidney function is what I follow over time about once a year. Okay, perfect, thank you. That's so helpful. Um, and then one last question for you. What screening do you do for systemic disease? It's another really good question. Um, so lupus, we know, can affect almost any organ in the body. Absolutely. Um, so the review of systems, really always your important th tool to go back to in your history, asking a good head-to-toe review of systems because almost any organ system can be involved. Um, but we're really keying into signs that you can ask for in your review of systems of serositis, which is fluid collection around the heart and lungs, so shortness of breath, chest pain and palpitations, neurologic symptoms, um, particularly psychosis and seizures, history of blood clots, looking for thrombotic events, um, kidney involvement, they have leg swelling, things like that. But honestly, a head to toe evaluation um, based on your, your history more so than any kind of imaging studies. We're always taught that history is the most important thing and it's, it's coming so back true. around again. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for your insight. You are a wealth of knowledge and we're so lucky to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for listening.